It's that time of year, and what better way to celebrate the holiday season than with some new music? The Buzz checked in with reggae artist Jaggy as he releases his new album, Christmas in the Islands. Nice time, holiday, the right time. On the rock, feel the vibe, sipping my tie. With the road every night, pepper light, bright, make a flex, now me ride, I can be your tour guide. Show me a cock, Christmas, everything nice. Fried chicken, curry gravy with the white rice. Yellow bubble body, ever look tight. Pure light goes up in the sky. So of course, today we are talking about uh, a new project that you're working on that you have coming out on November 20th, and that is for Christmas. So tell me yeah. a little bit about that. Uh, it's, you know, Christmas in the Islands is the name of the album. And um, it's uh, it's an idea I got from before when I, I think, I don't know if you remember last year we did uh, 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 a Christmas, um, some Christmas uh, special with, um, with Sting. And uh, we did a couple of Jamaican, well, a couple of reggae songs in Christmas, Feliz Navidad, you know, Drummer Boy, um, Jamaican Drummer Boy, and yeah, altered a couple of songs. Um, Christmas is coming with me and uh, and Sting, and we we shot it and and part of it was done uh, for on Christmas Day I think, and another part was done on Thanksgiving. And, you know, I think it was, uh, that was one of but you know we're doing these Christmas carols and in reggae and I, we're in the trailer and Sting and I came up with this whole idea of just doing maybe we do a reggae Christmas album, and um, we just kind of played with the idea back and forth and. We ended up being stuck in the pandemic in separate places. He was in England and I was in New York. And I, I just started it because I had all this time on my hand. And I, you know, I figured that the pandemic would have been over quick enough and I would have written these songs and I would meet up with him and then we'll sit down and go through them. But it just kept going. And so I just kept going also and just changed it to a Jamaican experience. And then after a while, he's like, well, I can't tell you about Christmas in Jamaica. I don't live there. So. It just ended up being a shaggy album, and um, I, you know, I just, in, you know, went ahead and got some great people like, you know, Bone to Killer and Bean and Man, who are icons in the game. Shen Sio is one of the new sensations, along with Omi, who had great international success with Cheerleader. I had Sanchez, who was classic, you know, one drop, uh, lovers rock singer. Uh, you know, I went for some guest people like Neil who was always in, in Jamaica. And of course, Ding Dong is, is, is on fire now in Jamaica. Everybody loves him and he keeps his spirits high. And then of course, I went ahead and got, uh, you know, Josh Stone, who is one of uh, a Grammy for the best reggae album and has always been in Jamaica and just really loves being there for Christmas and all that. And I just wanted them to have their, to, to just kind of express their experiences and songs on this on this album and it, it just turned out to be a really great project. We put the first track out, which is uh, Ragama for Christmas with uh, Bone Tequila and Junior Reed. And I know everybody was kind of shouting, hold on it, Bone Tequila, Junior Reed, I thought about Christmas. <laughs> but the track was great and well received. And, um, you know, and, you know, it's just, it's just been uh, uh, fun so far. Yeah. So in that, when artists tend to do Christmas albums, they tend to kind of stick to redoing the same carols that we've heard. But we know Jamaicans don't stick to doing anything the way that they <laughs> that they have traditionally been told to. Not that I need you. At all. So what is the vibe? You mentioned the first one is, you know, just Junior Reed and Bones Kilo on Christmas, which is, you know, like, who thinks of that? So what is the vibe of a lot of the songs? You have Shinsia on Christmas, you have, um, you know, Oh Me on Christmas. What, what's mm. the vibe you're giving us? The thing, the thing for me is, you know, from, as a kid, I've always realized that people always come home for Christmas. There was just, there would be returning Jamaicans coming from, from foreign, and they're always coming at Christmas time. And you always realize that tourists will always try to come to Jamaica at that time uh, to have Christmas there, down there because it's warm. And and our Christmas in Jamaica is different from a regular, you know, Christmas with them. Uh, sleigh bells and snow. It's it's you know beach, um, grand market, food, you know parties after parties after parties after parties. You know and you know I just wanted to tap into that. I said, wouldn't it be great for us to have a a body of songs that really um, cater to that, cater to the the style of how we would do it in Jamaica. And you know I did two traditional songs on there: "Have Yourself a Merry Christmas" and "I'll Be Home for Christmas." 
uh, but I did them reggae, you know, just straight up reggae, you know, just to catch a vibe on them. And uh, those seem to be coming over well. Most of the television we're doing, they want they, a lot of them want those, you know. Um, but it adds to that roller coaster ride, you know, your 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 feeling of party, chill music, listening music, mood music, all in one package, you know. And um, I just thought, you know, that 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 was something that was it was time. We're in a pandemic. I my thing about the whole pandemic was not to make any sad music, you know, because everybody was already so depressed and looking at things. So you know, when we did Banana, and that was such a big hit for us. And and everybody, what I liked about Banana was just that everybody was smiling, you know, black, white, young, old, straight, gay, and everybody was just having a great time. Challenge. Right, and doing that dance. And it made me feel uh, a sense of purpose. It gave me um, uh, just a real good vibe. And I, I wanted to spread that on, on this record also where, okay, it's Christmas and a lot of us say, what is a COVID Christmas going to look like? You know, and if I could do anything to lighten it up by creating these songs that make you feel like you want to be on an island somewhere, you know, um, lighten up the trees. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what is your writing process when you sit to write a song? And then you've been doing this for obviously decades and has your writing process changed obviously over time, but then even specific to this, you know, kind of doing Christmas, has it is it a different writing process for something like this? Um, writing for me is a different thing than than people. I'm, I'm the type of person, if I go into write and the studio session starts at 8 and it ends at 10, between 8 and 10, you're hitting the song. It is what it is. It's like, a, it's right. like going to work for me, you know what I mean? So it's, now whether I like the song or not, that's a whole different story, you know? I will, if I'm in a good vibe, I'll write three songs a day. Um... If I'm not, you know, they, they, I, somebody explained to me the other day, or like, uh, you know, I was talking to a particular artist who was here and, you know, I'm trying to show them some stuff and they're like, you know, they're trying to get into real deep and says, music is like, you know, it's like birthing my child. One of these songs is like my child. And I'm like, that's such bullshit. <laughs> Cause at the end of the day, you know, if I don't like a song, I just throw it away and, you know, write another one. You know, what are you going to do? Throw away the kid? <laughs> Cause you don't like him? Oh, well, you know, he, he was born and he's bald headed. I want one with hair. <laughs> what do you, you know, it's, it makes no sense. They're just songs, you know? And you look at every single major act from Bob Marley straight down to, uh, you know, Michael Jackson, whosoever you could name it. I guarantee you they have more flop songs than they do hit songs. So they're just songs, you know what I mean? So why are you dwelling on, on it that hard? It's, they're just songs. You know, so my process and my out view of, of, of writing has changed, you know, to a point. What I do in writing for a Christmas album, you know, you kind of look for these points that are going to be relatable to people, you know, and is only so much things you can write. Once you write about mistletoe and you write about rum cake and you write about rum, and you write about weed and you write about the beach and then you write about presents and you write about mistletoe. And you write, after that, you know, you've got to spread that out over you know, 12, 15 songs to make it make sense. You know, you got to capture that holiday spirit with these little trinkets of things that brings you to a, to a, you know, a Christmas uh, theme, so to speak. And uh, that was what I had to do. And that, you know, I ended up just, and the songs ended up just flowing really cool, you know, because I knew what I wanted. I wanted to be reggae, but also hybrid and also crossover and, you know, I wanted an element of everything on there, but I still needed to be authentic uh, to Jamaica and dancehall and reggae. But she caught me on the counter, it wasn't me. Saw me banging on the sofa, it wasn't me. I even had her in the shower, it wasn't me. She even caught me on camera, it wasn't me. She saw the marks on my shoulder, it wasn't me. Heard the words that I told her, it wasn't me. Heard the screams getting louder, it wasn't me. She stayed until it was over. Honey came in and she got me red. It wasn't me. 
was a song that they didn't really greenlight at first, right? I think I, I watched uh, the making of, and it wasn't a song that um, that people wanted, but you believed in it, and you were like, no, this is a song. And of course, it has been, you know, one of your biggest hits in your career. Do you think that that um, standing by songs like that is, you know, part is a is it a feeling? Is it like a business thing? Like you said, you can't throw away your child. You can't throw away your child, but um, how does that part of it work? It, it, it. It, the, the crazy part about it is that you know people aspire to get to be signed to a big major record company and do things but the minute you do that you lose some of your power as an artist because now you have executives making decisions on uh, your child <laughs> you know that you've birthed you know and and you were not gonna let somebody else raise your child you know so you really got to look at them as just songs. If you start thinking about it in that way, you know, your anxiety level is going to go up. Um, I think that in doing songs like those, you want to stand up. I go it by an ear. And, and if I know that some, now I'm a different, I'm my own boss at this point. So, you know, nothing goes without I say, yay. But you have to work to get to this stage. You know, when you're just starting out and you don't have the capital you know, you don't have the money, you don't have the um, the know-how. You have to rely on people to guide you through it because you just don't know the game. I mean, now I know the game with my eyes closed, so I could be in charge of my destiny and how the type of music I make and what I put out first and how I market it and all of that. And it's coming back to artists now because a lot of artists, through their devices, they'll be able to run their own career. As you can see, record companies are having less and less uh, power on, on a lot of these artists these days, which is great, you know, uh, on one sense. Uh, but, um, you know, overall, you you, you, know, you, you, you tend to kind of make these records that you want to be timeless, you know, and I've always aimed to make timeless record because I know that I don't have the same, um, it's not the same level playing field as any other genre. This is, you know, dance all right now is the lowest streaming genre of all genres, but yet still most genres come from it. Afrobeat, um, reggaeton, they all stream better than dance all, hip hop stream better than dance all and reggae, but yes, the dance all and reggae is the bird child. They're bird childs of dance all and reggae. So we have to, we have to do things and think out the box. And I always try to think out the box, you know, to, to make because I'm you know I've been an artist that everybody knows so if I come with something that is incredible they're like oh but that's shaggy <laughs> you know we're expecting that so you have to do these things when I came with um uh four four eight seven six to me and sting everybody's looking at me like what the hell is this like what is he is he gone mad but yet still we were the highest grossing tour second highest grossing tour that year and you know the highest selling reggae album that year and we won a Grammy and it's just a testament to you sticking to your guns and letting people know that you believe in this because nobody believed in that album with me and Sting and Sting and I made a pact that we're going to make them understand what we're doing and you know he said it to me and says hey if they could just see this right out the box then they wouldn't be us you know we're special that's why we see what they can't see you know what I'm saying and it's you seeing a diamond in the rough than seeing it when it's shining so these songs, you know, I didn't expect, you know, I, I fought with my manager for years because he just didn't see my vision most of the time. And thank God I ended up firing him and, and you know, uh, life has changed since then. But a lot of it, that was not the only song that has that story. That's the only one that they did the story on. But there are many like that where I'm like, you know, because even Bombastic was on a B-side. Yeah. <laughs> that was another what? part. I think that if you tell them one that now, they'd be like, that's not right. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? That, that's that. And that that was actually not saved by, it was saved by Ken Berry, who was the head of uh, Virgin at the time. And we got a, a thankfully, we got a, 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 a um, Levi's commercial. And he stepped into the meeting and says, hey, this record is coming out and it's coming out uh, with the commercial. That's how we ended up getting it, and it debuted at number one. First, the first time in reggae history and dance all history that a record debuted on a chart straight in at number one. And it was a record that, again, the manager did not like that one either. Didn't want, it, you know. So it's, you know, people tend to look at what's going on and try to cookie cut what's going on because they think they'll get in easier because you're making exactly what people are making. And I'm the opposite. You should not make what people are making. You should go against the grain. 
You know what I mean? You got to see what will be cool than see what's cool. You know, and that's how you keep yourself going and reinvention is everything. And, you know, to testament of it, I've lasted, you know, almost 30 years. And, and, and and to this that, I was going to ask you, what's, the, what's yeah. the secret to not just, you know, lasting 30 years, but just also the, the relevance, the versatility. And at this point in your career where you are, you know, clearly, you know, like you said, you're your own boss. You've seen yeah. everything. You kind of. I'm at, well, I'm, at, I'm having more fun now. Yeah, is there, is there anyone left that you would like to work with? Is there someone still that you're like, okay, because you've worked with like everybody. Well, the thing about it is, if, if you look at it, I I don't really do collaborations based on who's hot. You know, I, I do it based on relationships that I have. And if you look at my track record of people, um, you know, I did it Wasn't Me with, a, with a, a little unknown artist by the name of Rick Rock. And I did Angel with an unknown artist by the name of Rayvon. And I did I Need Your Love with two unknown artists, Mohambi and Fady. And recently I just did Banana with another unknown artist, which is Conqueror. Yeah. So that has been my pattern. It's all about the song and the integrity of the song. And I've carried most of my records. You know, and even when I did it, 4487 Sing with Sting, you know, it wasn't like Sting was the highest streaming guy and he was super hot, you know? But he was an icon and he was my friend and we collect, we connected musically and we created magic and that's what we brought to the table. So I'm not really looking at it to like, oh my God, it's going to be streaming mostly and did, I'm, I'm over that. I've done that. I've done where I'm the biggest guy in the world and sold the most records in the world and, and, and I've done that. It's about making something that is so great that it fulfills me. Because when I make a record first, I make it to please me first. And then I put it out. I don't cultivate it in my life. I do something, I, I got to like it and love it first. You know what I mean? And then I put it out. And if it connects, it connects. And if it don't, it don't. Then I make another one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, that's just how I work. I'm not, I'm not stressing over any particular song. You know, or, 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 but I keep reinventing because I don't, nobody's going to be bored of me before I'm bored of me. I get bored very easily. And that's probably a drawback thing of mine. But I have to keep it moving and mixing it up. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'm looking forward to this. First of all, I saw the lineup of the songs and I saw the collaborations and the artists yeah. and just like all of that. And we have oh, so you haven't heard it yet? You should. You no, should I haven't heard it. I I yeah. haven't heard it, but I'm I'm ready. Good. All right. Enjoy. Yeah. Thank you. Have a lovely all right. day. All right. Likewise. Take care.